Loveline is meant for an adult audience. Loveline may contain sexually oriented content. With sexually oriented content. Listener discretion is advised. Listener discretion is advised. Listener discretion is advised. This is Loveline. 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 With Adam Carolla. Dr. Drew. Hey, everybody. It's Loveline. I'm Adam Carolla. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Don't forget about that phone number. Wait oh, one, Wait. wait. Whoa. One thing they shouldn't forget about, Dr. Drew. Still board certified. Still addiction board. Medicine still specialist. certified. And still enjoying Loveline. No, never more than a show like this. Mm, why, Drew? Because this is the best of Loveline. How so? <laughs> Well, pray tell. Uh, we will be uh, out skiing, I imagine. And, you uh, will be. I will all be, right? in fact. I'll be in the Sun Valley, Idaho. And I'll tell you, I'll be uh, skiing, too, if it's on TiVo, because that is my new alternative uh, life. Surfing for you. Whatever's surfing. on. No, no, I don't mean channel surfing. I mean, I will be doing whatever I TiVo. I, that, I, I've literally, never, think about no, that. I've now, think how you do it. I have now blurred the lines between life and TiVo. You understand? I understand. I'll be playing in the Super Bowl this year. I see. World Series, uh, you NASCAR, doing, it never I thought, ends. I thought it referred to your no. habits of watching the no, Cinemax. As usual, kind of you misunderstand. Yeah. Okay. Well, anyway, tonight, beginning with mm -hmm. Jay Moore and Julian Nicholson. Yeah. But uh, Jay Moore is always a good guest, and it was a pleasure to see him again. And I, saw, I heard him tonight on The Family Guy doing a voice of a uh, television executive. All right. Let's edit this part out. Let's get to it. Hey, everybody, it's Loveline. I'm Adam Perola. It's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1 800 LME 191. Julian Nicholson is here tonight. Jay Moore. Seeing other people is the name of the movie. Jay Moore's like some uh, 50s character. He's, uh, he sees everyone in the hall. Hey, kid, looking good. What's your name again? <laughs> That's kid? right, baby. Yeah, here's a quarter. Looking good. Keep up the good work. Chris, hey, buddy, nice job on the board. Looking good. Looking sharp. All right. That's how get, it goes, man. Could you get these shoes polished for me? <laughs> hey, now go get your shine box, Chris, huh? <laughs> yeah, you want a nip? You want a nip? Yeah, you're good. Okay. <laughs> hey, hey, Chris. Hey, Lauren. Cute kid. You're adorable. Keep it up. <laughs> but that's what I'm nice to people. No, it's good. Everyone thinks I'm a jerk. No, no, it just it, it comes across. Yeah, panic as, disorder, though. It's sincere. Do you? Yeah. Now, how does the panic? It does not come across. <laughs> ask Lauren right now and ask Chris if they think I'll be. I pat him on the back. He's just walking by for it, no reason. You gave him a cracker. You pat him on the head like Benny Hill would do the little. What are you Mexican? Kid. Yeah, you got to be nice to them. Yeah, they'll rise up. Kid. Yeah, no, you got to be nice to the Mexicans. They'll rise, rise up. Rise cool. They'll right. rise up. But they'll Yo, dude, that's messed up. Scratch themselves <laughs> and be back for another nap. Don't worry. Now, tell me... Uh, <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, they'll rise up. All right, now, look. Hold on, Jay. I want to talk about your panic disorder because Drew... <clears throat> yeah, I want to. I want to let people know that if 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 the uh, if the Doctor Drews of the world and the Jay Moores of the world can have panic disorder, then they should buy my book. Then they should buy. <laughs> and I'll come book. back on, uh, before the book comes out, and we can do a whole thing about it. What is? Yeah. How as good, opposed yeah. to taking away from the Julianne Nicholson times. Give us a panic disorder <laughs> yeah. story. Saturday Night Live. SNL. You're on SNL. It's irrational. Rolling. Uh, I was not in any sketches for like the fifth week in a row, and right. I sat in my dressing room. And Roseanne was the host. And I sat and I positioned my chair in my dressing room so that it was directly under the TV that hangs from the ceiling so that if it fell, I would be killed. <laughs> and Gee, it, why was he panicking? No, yeah. it's just the right? most depressed ever. And then as I just, after sketch, after sketch, and like the sketches suck, you know, sometimes. Right. And then I just sat there and I thought, oh, I can't catch my breath. And then all of a sudden I thought, oh my God, I can't catch my breath. And I have to crap and throw up and everything <laughs> on the inside of me has to be on the inside of me. And then I right have, I'm, I'm leaving. Like yeah, I'm well, dying. Yeah. And I ran all the way to uh, the hospital on 2nd Avenue. Now, the thing I find interesting about it is you didn't have a sketch that night. Like, he, was, he was depressed. I, I understand, but I, my instinct would be he's doing a sketch at the end of the night yeah. and the panic attack kicks no, in. No, but yeah. see, that's I'm, I'm in show business. I'm a comic. So that's when everything's working out. That's stimulus response. The stimulus is you hand in a sketch, you write it. when he doesn't have the stuff to focus on, he gets the panic. Right. I, it's it's lack, for me, it was all lack of structure. Yeah. It feels like depression. It doesn't. It seems it a weird place for the, a panic to come oh, in. Oh, depression. My, mine was all depression. It was. Oh, depression is, is a good cause for panic and generalized anxiety, both. Really? Uh, yeah. But no, panic I, isn't I, as bad as... Panic's the worst thing in the world because it's so irrational, like nothing causes it. Right. So your heart just starts 
No, it's you're dying. You, you are absolutely you can't dying. Really describe right. it. You Someone's can't describe pushing it. it. You ever like, if you push in on your Adam's apple, mm -hmm. it's like that feeling all the time, is and it, you have to crap, and then like it, it, every person somatically feels it differently, but in the brain, it it's a discharge that's completely dysregulated of endorphins and adrenaline. Imagine you're in, you just jumped off the Titanic middle of the ocean, you're starting to get sucked down. Right, right. that's that's the feeling. That, that's like I have to but, fight but, to but get out of this. But you're just sitting there. Right, and so you can't. If you at least you could be physically active, you just add a move. Movie watching the screen and all of a sudden, pow! The car's on fire and your seatbelt won't come loose. <laughs> right. right. Well, I I've never had one, but I picture it like kind of like Fred Sanford when he would say he's coming with us. <laughs> but some people it's that way. For, for me, I, for me it felt like I was either having a seizure or going crazy because your mind races out of control. You yeah. feel like so it's completely. So what, what is the best move? Uh, let's say you can't get to a hospital. Did you well, actually went to a hospital? I ran to a hospital, and I always thought I was going to pass out too, which is That's weird because you don't pass thing. out when your heart races; you pass when it drops. Yeah, mm -hmm. people get the feeling they're going to pass out. Well, uh, you can hyperventilate till you pass out. I ran home and I, my roommate had Valium and I'd never <laughs> taken Valium before Smart. and I, I called my dad and mom because my mom's a nurse and my dad's really? a know-it-all. And I said, if I take this Valium, what'll happen? And my dad's like, let me look it up in the PD, what is it called? PDR. The PDR. <laughs> oh, it says here, it cures uh, it anxiety. It says PFD. go ahead. <laughs> and I was like, gulp. And wow. then I just sat in the bathtub for a little while. Uh, in water that unfortunately was not deep enough to drown me. I can't believe you called your dad to do some drugs, though. No, but that look, no, Medicine, because I'm a please. I'm a bit of a pillophobe, so I didn't want to take something like in case I was allergic to it. Or, All right, it's weird. All right. So you called your dad. He said, "Cool." So you took it, and Valium. I took it, and then feeling normal became absolutely euphoric. Mm. Oh yeah. And uh, one of the chapters of the book is nothing is as beautiful as having things the way they were. Yeah. And just being normal and having normal, like, fear and pissed offness, festivity. And then I went back to the show and I was, like, just absolutely euphoric. And I was just telling everyone I had a panic attack. You went back the next day or that no, night? No, that night. It was, like, wow. in the middle of a show. And then uh, Sarah Silverman said, oh, I, you, that's a panic attack. You have to go see my doctor, Noelle Taylor. Jew, she what a saved surprise. My, <laughs> she saved my life. Go ahead. And then... Uh, I left a message, and then the doctor called me back and said she could see me first thing Monday, so then I only had to get through Sunday. And mm -hmm. she said, you just have a real basic panic disorder. It's how many panic attacks have you had? I said I had about three. But you were depressed. Did she treat the depression? No, I, was, I, didn't ha I never had depression, really. You, you sat on TV waiting for it to fall on your head. <laughs> uh, it's this place. But that's, that's appropriate depression. That's, I'm not yeah, working at the place. I'm it's situational depression. That's not like I wake up depressed. I'm happy all the time. Julia Nicholson, best actress uh, of uh, by other people. Okay. Yeah. Well, so I'm let, so not. Let me no. ask this. Do, do, do people who have more brain cells to rub together, do they have panic attack more so than I others? believe so. I think it's that that's we've talked about. Well, that's convenient, Jay. Okay. <laughs> but we've talked, <laughs> yeah, we've talked about that, that, that the motivate the autonomic tone you and I have talked about. You're either, yeah, you're either, the engine's running high, engine's running low. Right. Yeah. He's got a Cox 049 engine buzzing in his brain. Says, <laughs> right. yeah. yeah, you too. Yeah. You? It's not good for anything. Right, you? I, I got the uh, engine from the African Queen. <laughs> just kind of chugging a right. smoke balloon out, barely nice. moving. Julia Nicholson. <laughs> Stop it. Why? I have not had a panic attack. You haven't? No. Nope. You're one of those people. Throw it in there. Yeah. You've had anxiety attacks, I've had, though. Yeah, big anxiety. Same thing. But never that, like, not total pressure. Panic. Not total panic. You know, the My synonym. My going to stop thing. I'm sorry, sweetheart. No, that's, I'm done for another 10 now, minutes. Now, what's, anxi what's the anxiety <laughs> attack? Anxiety, the synonym is fear. Uh, no, anxiety, the synonym in Webster's, is, ca is um, care. Mm -hmm. And in panic, the synonym is fear. Mm -hmm. So they're like complete opposites by definition. Anxiety is stimulus response. Your boss is yelling at you, and then eventually, if you keep yelling at you and yelling at you, then one day you're driving to work and you get an anxiety attack, because right. that's the building where you get yelled at. Like right, right. now? Right. Julia you guys Nicholson. Are all talking, and I'm not. And my heart's starting to break. Is it really? <laughs> no. Just, just why just can't you little. be like? Because you could be like the uh, Orlando Blackman on like the Mavericks, and just sit back in the cut. You get a pass, drain your three every once in a while, and you jog back up the court. Yeah, why don't can't worry you about be like it. Orlando Blackman. You know, if I knew who he was, I would try to be like him. Kyle, <laughs> colored guy. <laughs> okay. Yeah. There you go. Okay, I'll work that. You're uh, 19. Huh? <laughs> You're 19. <laughs> I'm I'm guessing guessing he's, not he's not prone to panic. Julianne attacks, Nicholson, Kyle. Uh, Kyle, African Queen. What's <laughs> yeah. your question? Yeah, funky father. All right, I'm done with yeah. Kyle. Okay. All right. I said many years ago we should stop talking to guys on oh, this show. You have said that <laughs> and been right. You have been right. <laughs> Tiffany. <laughs> Tiffany. Yeah. Hi. Well, we got uh, they got a double clutch on the <laughs> <laughs> first one. Must just been for air. <laughs> Tiffany's 21. What's going on? Oh, I have 
have a problem. I'm going out on the limb calling y'all. All right, go ahead. Um, around a year and a half ago, they said I had cervical cancer. They said it. Did they treat it? Yeah, they froze my cervix and they removed all the cancer cells and they said they that everything was fine, that it shouldn't recur. Let me just and let me just stop you for a second. Did you have a conization also, or just the, for the cryotherapy? <laughs> Uh, I don't remember. Right. I think it was just There's a cryotherapy. study just came out this week that showed that uh, something I we've kind of talked about a little bit, but mo most of the cervical cancers, the ones at least that are really meaningful, <laughs> occur just at the, the mouth of the cervix. The cervix is like a donut with a hole in the middle of it. Mm -hmm. And the most of it occurs right in the hole in the middle. And the colonizations really cut that mm -hmm. out. They cut the middle out. And this study just came out that showed that women that have had that procedure have a much, much higher incidence of miscarriage. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, um... Mm -hmm. I've been like, whatever, Drew, let me keep going. That's very Buddhist to cut out the hole. Yeah. <laughs> I was just thinking yeah. about adding my creamy filling. That's all I can oh, think about. Oh, you're disgusting, Julia <laughs> Nicholson. <laughs> <laughs> See, yeah. no, right. But my uh, problem is, is I've been engaged for a year and a half, and I love my fiancé, and I want to pleasure him, and I want to be with him, and all the emotional attachments that come with it. But my problem is, is ever since I've had that surgery, it hurts, and I don't want to talk uh -oh. to him about it. I've gone to doctors and they said there's no scar tissue, there's nothing, and I'm just All don't right, know hold, what to do anymore. Hold on a second, hold mm -hmm. on now. So you've had recent pap smears, right? Yes. Have you? And recently there's no recurrence, there's no wart virus, there's nothing like that? There's nothing. And have you had an ultrasound to see if there's some other problem that might be causing the pain, like endometriosis? Yes, I've been in the hospital for a month and a half. I what? tried everything. You were in the hospital for a month and a half? Yeah, because they were running tests. I was in and out for a month and a half. She even called Jay's dad at one point when she <laughs> broke down. He's a know-it-all. <laughs> he knows. You, you weren't in the hospital for a month and a She's half. She's at her wits end, Jay. You were in the hospital for a month and a half? Well, the first time I was in because my stomach swelled up. And then in and out, I'm very oh. well All right, Hold Tiffany. On. Wait, wait, wait. Let me get to a tunnel. Wait a minute. Tip. The phone's gone all funky. I know, but here, now we, you think something's up with it. Now we've got to get to the next stuff. Yeah, now we, we gotta, do? Yeah, yeah. All right. And we yeah. can't just label our nuts and move forward? No. <laughs> no? You can, but we're not going Tiffany? Yeah. Oh, uh, boy. Okay. Well, well, just, well, well, just, well, just give me a yes or no. Were you sexually abused growing up? No. No. That was a no? There's a faint no. no. There's a faint no. No, but the whole thing's, what's going on with this show? It's the phone. Her phone's messed up. <laughs> it's the world's famous K Rock. For, I mean, if it's Stryker, not our phone, it's hers. Striker, you can put a chimp behind the board and do what he does. <clears throat> Striker's a pro. There's no doubt about it. Uh, and that's she, his real name. All right, she, so she's had extensive evaluation. Hmm. She's got s somatic preoccupations, much like Jay Moore. And they can't explain it. it has to. It's something called dyspareunia, which is pain with intercourse. It could be a hundred different things. All you can, she can really do is keep going back and try to look for an explanation. I will tell you, though, that when. That nine times out of ten, plus when women have unexplained pelvic pain, it ends up being a sexual abuse history. Nate, in yeah. the meantime, keep going down on him like you're drowning, and his nuts have oxygen. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Jane Moore. It, well, look, she I, said she wants to pleasure him. Coming out of the movie this week. What's no, it, she movie? said I really want to pleasure him, but yeah. it hurts. I, yeah. No, and and, it, and it's true. Like women are always like, I don't know what to do, and it just, just put the tip in. Yeah, get in, get going. Doesn't That'll he know do how to it. be gentle? He's got to be like a savage and like, you know, do the whole thing every time, get through the whole donut? Yeah, but it right. takes all kinds. It does. Yeah, okay. All right. Nate? Yeah. Savage. You're <laughs> 17. Yeah, hey, guys, what's up? What's hey, happening? What's up, I, um, look, yeah, I was uh, calling to ask Drew yeah. um, what the dangers are with an irregular bowel movement is. What do you mean by that? Um, all right, like... Julianne in, Nicholson? Yeah, comes seeing, out. Seeing other people comes, comes out. out like, uh, it comes on uh, the movie comes I out. Seeing see her, but his comes out like a, a topiary. Ah, no, um, quite an image. From like when I was in the sixth grade up until about a year ago, um, I used to like I wouldn't take a dump very much at all. Like, hold once, on, hold on, I'm writing. Slow down. <laughs> Go ahead. All right, Nate. Uh, like once a month, a lot. Of once, a once, once a, a month. month. Oh my God, Elvis. Yeah. Once a month. Yeah, not once a month. No, no. yes, no. It really, it really was. I mean, it was, it was really bad. But um, over the past year, it's gotten a whole lot better. Um, to where like I do it like once every. Were you holding your stool intentionally? Um. Well, I mean, like the thing, like it would. At first, like it didn't, like I never had the movement or whatever. But then when I did, like it hurt too much, so I would just stop and be like, "Screw it, I'll do it later." And uh, and it just kind of built up each time. You would hurt. Do you have do you have a hemorrhoids or something? A what? Oh, um, 
Well, actually, it's weird because only until this past year, when it's actually been getting better, has it started. Have I started getting like a hemorrhoid there and stuff? Well, why did it hurt? Is my question. What do you mean? Because uh, all right, listen. He's Are you retarded? He what do you mean? Track. Why does it hurt? He doesn't try. Sometimes why? No, not you. Him. Yeah. yeah. No. And I, I thought you said I'm a right spider. I think when he says holding his bowel too, I mean. I thought he, I think he actually in his hands. Manny was actually hard. Right. Go see a doctor. Yeah, now here's the deal: you, you need to Isn't take bulk. You need to take stools. Hoarding? Yeah, he could be some mm. sort of. Whoa! Oh, see, <laughs> three <laughs> point it's goal. Pretty, pretty, pretty unusual. I mean, you really the first hoarding. thing to do is you like that one. Look see at my his, girl in the cut. To look Fecal at his bowel hoarding. function. Another great old blues singer. He may need colon, <laughs> colonoscopy. He needs to be on bulk. He needs to be on a stool. Stool softener. Cat played with. He may have some rectal pathology. The hoarding trio. Julian Nicholson baseline three. Three, boy, go! That's how you do it, girl. <laughs> okay. Uh, who needs Sharon Osbourne when you got Drew? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Is that a real thing? Yes. Yes. I've, I've mm -hmm. seen X-rays of it. It's not. Funny. Why? Was it a friend? No. It was. <laughs> <laughs> The x rays wow. usually no. from, you see from people that uh, are laxative abusers that then their bowel, their bowel becomes atonic and nothing moves and just fills up. That's mm -hmm. the x ray mm -hmm. usually you see. I wrestled and we all abused it. There, there, are, there are lots of descriptions of little kids holding their bowel and hoarding. It was, it was a young girl who yeah. was like, a, like 12, 13 years yeah. old. Yeah. Right, a so. seven year old male to do this is pretty wild. So Wait. that's why you got to go on the medical. Did she have a cousin first. named Susie? <laughs> what are the records? What are the, uh, <laughs> I don't know. You know, hey, a month. Month seems like a pretty good. It's a pretty good. Pretty good run. <laughs> the problem is about again, it can become etonic and stop functioning. Right. Then you, they have to remove it. It can be a big mess. All right. But um, boom. I'm, and by the way, here's something. Oh, I've been and one. Some of she goes to the line. Interested in is I'm very regular. Uh, yeah. Drew is uh, yeah, good for every other day. Yeah. And uh, that's see, everyone leads you to believe that if you go, the more you go, the healthier you are. No. Drew no. says no. No, it's ridiculous. Should be once no. a day, no? Once a day, approximately, yeah. yeah. But I go like three times in the, like in the morning just because I drink so much coffee. Yeah. And if I have like fruit and stuff. I just made. <laughs> you did? Mm hmm Yeah. Mr. Hanky? Chris, we're going to need you to... We're gonna, we, got a little, we got a little cleanup aisle, aisle three here. All right. Let's you people are good with your hands, right? <laughs> Ro Rochelle? Yeah? Bush. What's happening? Can, oh, you can hear me. Um, yeah. I just, I'm wondering, I can't orgasm during sex through penetration. Yeah, that's most, Very normal. most women. What's that? <clears throat> that's most women, Rochelle. <laughs> most. Oh, oh. Well, what? Well, it's, just, it's irritating because I can come from oral sex and by myself, but That's correct. Like, you, I want to come with my boyfriend and I it, can't. It's not going to happen. It's I, like, I like the recap, though. <laughs> yeah. Oh. I'll tell you again. <laughs> yeah. So. You, you can all you know you can you can masturbate during the act. Yeah, doesn't work yeah, for well, women. We do that. Yeah. We do do that. But it's overwhelming. Like the clit has a panic attack. <laughs> <laughs> and then it calls my father. <laughs> it calls Chase dad. There's like there's when the pink phone starts ringing at the Moore household, uh, Chase dad's like, uh oh, <laughs> little man in the boat uh, hotline. Uh oh, yeah. What's wrong with self manipulation during intercourse? Yeah, what's wrong? Oh, you're asking me? If women no, become I'm asking her. Women become overwhelmed. I'm asking you. I'm asking her. Wait till she it, tells you the, the same. Yeah. Go ahead. I become overwhelmed. No, no. It, again. <laughs> I got to wait that out? All right. Here's the deal. <laughs> we were reviewing this an awful lot. Women, women have a spectrum of sexual response. The, the significant majority will never have orgasm during intercourse. There's about 20, 30% will have it generally with intercourse one time or with oral sex. Yeah. The, the and most, the other most one married will have it me. only with or, oral sex. And, then, <laughs> and there's about 10% that will have multiple orgasms. It will, Jay's, Jay's wife. Yeah. You know, wow. Well, stuff falls out all the time. Yeah. You better learn how to fake it with that guy on top of you because uh, he'll go nuts on you. I'll fab on her ass. <laughs> all right. Well, then. All right. So you're, you're still ahead. You're ahead of the game at 19 uh, that you're having it orally with your boyfriend. And with masturbation, too. That's and, and with uh, masturbation. Most, many women, 18 to 22, don't orgasm at all. Can you masturbate now? Now? You go to break. Not right now, Jay. Relax. <laughs> oh, I was like, no way. But, Why Rochelle, not? let me let me. Wait, ask. you work or something? You, you heard this FCC thing what? that's going on? <laughs> I, we got to watch it. She said, come five times. <laughs> let me ask you re real quick, Rochelle. If you helped yourself out when your boyfriend <laughs> was giving you intercourse, do you think you could have an orgasm? Yeah, I do. That's the no way we normally do it. Or I just, um, while. Oh, so well, welcome to the big that. leagues, honey. That's how it goes. He's in yeah, you. Really? He's in you, and you're having an orgasm, That's right? Cut in 10 done. seconds. All right. Do you squirt? All right. Relax. All right. Okay. <laughs> what? Let's Mr. take a break. Hey, Jay Moore's here. Julianne. Is it Julianne? Julianne. Oh, I give her... I, go I, I, on. I almost said Juliana. That's why. No, thank you. That's Julianne. right. Julianne. Nicholson is here tonight. We will uh, take ourselves a quick break. When we Jack come Nicholson's back, niece. Drew? No. Really? No. Will it make it more interesting? <laughs> yes, it could, yeah. 
Yes. All right. We come back. I we'll can't have a believe great that. call. <laughs> a great call after this. Buddy Loveline, I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. It's the best of Loveline. Yeah. As we continue with a dear, dear, dear friend who I've only met once. Who I was in a movie with. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You That's sure you should be talking about cinematic that? Cinematic triumph. I'm retarded. Sure you should be talking about that. Mm -hmm. uh, name of that movie, of course, is a New York Minute. Mm -hmm. That's about how long it lasted in the theaters. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, please enjoy Andy Richter. I'm Adam Carolla. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1 800 L O V E 191. Dear, dear new friend, dear friend, new friend, dear friend, Andy Richter. <laughs> dear, dear. Dear, dear. He's a dear friend. Dear, of mine. dear, dear. Andy Richter in uh, studio tonight. And you know, I, I, Andy had a, a sitcom that uh, only lasted a season or two so. seasons. Two seasons. Yeah. Two seasons. It was two seasons, but it was mid-season both seasons, which oh. is sort of like ah. a pat on the back and a punch in the gut. How at many? Same time. How many episodes of uh, Andy Richter? Control there are the nineteen, uh, but I think only fifteen. 14 aired. All right. So it felt it felt to me like a season's worth of uh, show. Oh, yeah. It's still, it's less than a season's Everybody worth. Everybody I ever spoke to liked that show. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Thank you. Well, it, it's one of those, you know, here, here's what it would be the uh, equivalent to. It'd be the equivalent to uh, you going up to the, pel the plate against uh, Pedro Astacio or some, some fastballer. Foul, hit, hit one that just missed a foul pole and went to the bleachers. Would have been a grand slam. Fouling a few off, taking a few, and eventually striking out after a very uh, courageous at bat. And you can hold your head up walking right. back to the dugout. Right. And as a matter of fact, uh, probably score some points. I mean, it was, it, was, it was almost too ambitious. It was almost too good for... Too good uh, for the public. Too good. Yeah, a little too well, No, it was... I don't... See, run. I personally... I, I mean, if the show had been on and had been left on in a, in a, in a, a, a fair way, I would be more than willing to go, you know what, people just didn't really want to see it. But it was constantly being dicked around and like, you know, moved from one spot to another and taken off the air for a month and then put back on for three weeks, showing twice, twice a week, and then taken off for two weeks and then put back on another night. Right. And it just, there's no way to build any kind of viewership like that and uh you know and i had i mean to me what was evidence of the show being mishandled was like you said everybody seemed to really like it i mean I, and i'm not saying like it was well, the greatest thing ever it was but it's a pretty good Andy, show what are they going to tell you i know that's what true. Are they gonna tell you? that's true cuz a lot of people when they meet me they uh, they think i'm retarded <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and so they <laughs> just from the way i look that's it. and they uh i'm but, retarded um, <laughs> i'm retarded <laughs> see <laughs> but um no, I, it no it, that, but it, they, it was while it was show. while it was on in a second season, I had people, a number of people say, "When's your show coming back on?" And it had been on for like two months, right? And then I had not as many, but yet it, uh, a few people say, while the show was still in the air in the second season, "Man, I'm so mad that your show got canceled." Yeah, it's just like, oh, it's like a you know a hot knife in your guts, you know, right? Uh, it's Steering. not canceled. Steering you know. knife. So, but now I'm back with Fox. Well, as long as there's been some management change. You're not bitter. That's the important thing. I am a little bitter. Oh. I'm mad. <laughs> That's right. No, I am a little bitter. Wouldn't you be bitter? I Come would on. Be. Yes, yes. Yeah, I, I bet be. you. Now, you know what? I would be outraged. I would be out. Right. Yeah, <laughs> so that's ironic, I'm just finding it ironic that the people that are as mad as hell and aren't going to take it anymore are the people who are actually on TV. You yeah, know? they're not yelling at the television hierarchy. Right, right. not at the public. But no, <laughs> it's like okay. yeah. Well, the public. What can you do? You know, very fickle. Yeah, yeah, I'll throw my pearls before those swine as long as I can till the day I die. The point is, is Andy Richter's a survivor, and he lands on his feet. This kid. That's right. And he's got another shot on Fox that cleaned the little house over there. And he's back in smelling That's the That's right. And, no and I've been to rehab, so they're letting me back on. <clears throat> That's right. He's cleaning No more up. pills. All right. <laughs> I, I don't believe Andy's ever... Andy, have you ever thrown up because of alcohol? Oh, oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, good. Yeah, All, right. All right. Now we can hang. <laughs> dear, 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 dear friend. Oh. I was thinking you were still in a little bit of the yummy phase, weren't you? Yeah. yeah. I was, I was yeah. Thinking, what do you mean, yummy? Yeah. I got this theory. Uh, there, there are adults 
Okay, here's here's it. I you know there are adults, and uh, I worked with many of them uh, over here at the mother station for a number right. of years, the morning show, namely Kevin and Bean. Yeah, uh, and and then their old producer Frank, and a whole bunch of guys. And uh, for instance, at five thirty in the morning, I was the only one drinking a cup of coffee. They were drinking hot chocolate or oh. Mountain Dew or something <laughs> like that. And then oh, we'd go. Yeah, <clears throat> one time we all went to Seattle and we went out to a nice uh, fish joint. We're in, you know, the microbrew capital of the world. And they're ordering, you know, frescas and sprites. And I'm the only one getting the microbrew right. kind of thing. And probably ordering, like, burgers at the awesome fish place, right, too. Right, you right. Know? Yeah. Grilled cheese. Right. Yeah. Grilled cheese. And then I realized, okay... Everybody, every child is born into the yummy phase. I mean, every kid, kids don't like beer. They don't like cigars. Right. They don't like whiskey. They don't right. like poontang. They don't, although we're not sure because I'm going to figure, I'm going to get the bottom of it right. with my kid. Yeah. But the, the point is, is they don't like these things because they don't really taste good. I mean, a beer does not taste good. It tastes yeah. like a beer. Right. And so if they have their choice, well, they're not going to eat uh, smoked salmon and caviar and a cigar. They're going to, you're going to eat a grilled cheese with a lot, Lucky of, ketchup, charms. lot of ketchup on yeah, it, right. Lucky Charms, and uh, Mr. Pibb. And once in a while, you meet an adult who still seems to be trapped in the yummy phase. Absolutely. Now, somewhere along the line, like in your teens, peer pressure sets in. You're forced to drink the uh, Mickey's Big Mouth in the park until you puke with your buddies or uh, suck up a, uh, a Winston cigarette or something. You learn this sort of... Uh, you learn these things. Now, I don't think they ever really taste good. Like whiskey and even like red wine and stuff, it doesn't taste good. It just tastes like red wine. It right. tastes like whiskey. A woman tastes like a woman. These... These are, uh, you learn to appreciate them. The guys in the yummy phase, they get trapped in it. They take it to the ground. But I, I also is that think, not you? Uh, no, not that is not me at all. No, oh, I, no I, okay. I, I right. have uh, very uh, grown up taste. He's got, he's got, he's got I mean, the other way. They're sort of like so grown up. It's kind of creepy. Yeah, we'll really? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 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 yeah. The, the muskier, the better. You, guys you know what hang. I'm saying? Wow. You guys could hang. Uh, yeah. Your baby, no. don't shower. No. No. <laughs> no, I know. You just got back. Baby, from... don't shower. In fact, die. <laughs> I, oh um, uh, <laughs> wait a minute. Go to spinning class, then die, yeah. and then we'll talk. And then we'll talk in a <laughs> week. Not. Yeah. yeah. You get my trunk, and then we'll talk. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, oh, come on. You started no, it. This, uh, you're the guys. This no, is I, I knew, that, I knew that. you were one yeah, of the everybody's other. Everybody's like, hey, started. come on. Let's, you know, <laughs> yeah. let's walk down here. All right. You want to walk down here? Let's walk down here. <laughs> Damn it. All right. Um, no, I, I, but I actually do think though that the uh, the taste buds evolve. And I, I agree think with that you. Those, I think it's actually I think that, neurological. I think yeah, I think that the taste buds evolve. I don't think, they, evolve, evolve, so I think like, they actually kind of burn out a little bit. The, the whatever it is, I think we are programmed to want fatty and sweet foods because right. we need the calories to grow. And as we mature, those mechanisms deteriorate, go away, change, alter, configure to something more discriminating. Perhaps. Yeah, and I or just so, something like you appreciate. Sour and bitter, and yes. you know, there's like there's yeah, something sort don't of think chemical that, and actually, structural I, that goes on. I, I don't I actually don't think you learn that so much as it's sort of part of maturing. Because I think biologically, if, if yeah, you raised when, people to adulthood on an island mm -hmm. and only gave them kid food and then brought them back to society, if those adults would like coffee pretty quickly. Yep, I agree. Most of those, totally and there was agree. ones that like that mm -hmm. yummy crap would like that yummy mm -hmm. crap. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Mm -hmm. So you're saying. But 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 from so you you crave the fats you crave the starches you crave the sugars when you're young you grow. everybody needs yeah, it right. and then later on it shuts off you, you start turning on like whiskey and yeah. hooker Hooker's. nipple dead, and dead stuff like the dead the hooker my nipple. my older brother Mama is, is a total <laughs> like my older brother Hook, uh, hooker jerky you know when his because he's like had he's had health problems he's three years older than me and what's he got. He just had like he had like uh, gallbladder issues and stuff, and so like well, the way he's adjusted himself, he's like his, his diet, mm. he's he's overweight, but he's he's also he's a gigantic person. He's huh. like six foot five, and he's a really big man. But the way he's adjusted is that like he'll only get three candy bars a right. day, yeah. you know. And I, I like I honestly I cannot remember the last time. It's been probably twenty years since I bought a candy bar. Yeah, I've stolen you know, like, many, but you know, yes. no, but I mean, like, you know, after Halloween, there'll like the you know there'll be the minis around, and I might have one. It's not like I would be above it, but right. never would I like go to the gas station. But he needs a big movie star, yeah, and get a. He can't be. Hey, and can't all be what eating no, candy? No, no I, I know what you're saying. <laughs> I go to the gas station. I hang out at the gas station all the time. You gotta smoke some pot. You uh, some pot I got. Bought. I have to. Yeah. Now I did. Now, all right. Well, wait for the. Prank. No, I. You know. No, I. I. Uh, yeah. 
Sure. Sure. No. I've, I've come all around with Andy. Andy's, every fraternity house has an Andy. Yeah. No. See, no? That, that, see that people think they put me in the frat thing, but. No. Oh, no. No, no, no. What'd you Not do? What'd you do? The frat power. houses are loaded with. What? Can I say dicks? Yeah. Okay. I think. Dicks. Yeah. You I don't mean, like that. I do not like that. I do not like. Uh, Would you? Could you? Yeah. <laughs> I actually was. I. It's actually sort of like what, probably my darkest secret. Uh, you know, there's the the homo stuff, but then the other darkest secret uh-huh. is uh, <laughs> no is is I was a member of a fraternity. You are. Where'd you yeah. Uh, at, I started out at University of Illinois in sh- in uh, Champaign Urbana. Yeah. yeah, and I went and I I joined a fraternity because. I was from a small town, and I thought, well, if I want to have a social life, and U of I is like chokingly Greek, you know, oh, like right. you, can, yeah, it's like one of the yeah, at the time it was it's like a fairly the biggest. academic school too. I mean, it's, it's a pretty, pretty good yeah. school, yeah. That's, I mean, that's I went there because it was cheap, and I had pretty good grades, and I couldn't afford Northwestern, and uh, and, and I, so and, I thought I'll join. Seen, a f- we've seen Northern Illinois State, yeah, Northern Illinois. It's just no North, Northern Illinois in DeKalb. Yeah. Yes, yeah. we've been there twice. Yeah. That's yeah, part of twice. this. Yeah, that's part yeah. of the... They invented, you, go, they invented, you had to go back? Was it Cindy Crawford days? You know, she's Cindy from Barbed there. wire and yeah. Cindy Crawford. Yeah, yeah. I, I, had to, uh, I had to point out much of the dismay of the large crowd that, uh, <laughs> yes, Cindy Crawford may have been born here, but she got her ass out <laughs> yeah. as soon as she could walk. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> she... She took off immediately. Right. That's all you have to she, know. Because the town sort of e- ejected her. Yeah, well, the, the, the thing is, is it, it shouldn't be where you're born. Anyone can be born anywhere. Right. It's, where, it's where you end up. And she was smart enough at 13 to hit Milan and uh, get the <laughs> hell out of there. I ain't never I'm been back. I'm hitting Milan. Anyway, you're I'm taking wait, my mole and you're getting out. The other thing, I joined a fraternity wait, wait, because wait. I thought that's the only way to party. And I quickly realized it was a mistake. Yes. Uh, because there were... It was very much like what I feel like is happening in this country because I sort of ended up hanging with the stoners and the stoners were really kind of cool, but they couldn't be bothered to like... Uh, Have a life? No, to hold offices of power within the house. So it was all these other like guys that when you made fun of the fact that it was like some sort of all the, you know, the rituals and stuff were just like crypto fascist BS from some like goofy Baptist from 112 right. years ago and said like no this is really that's stupid all that stuff and they they get really mad at you wow. that's uh, that's you know it was sort of like the, but those guys were the only ones who would run for office Who's so they would now? set the rules right. I know yeah and well they're, they're all they're all you know yeah. apologizing <laughs> for yeah. photos and videos yeah you can, those guys a, haven't had shows canceled on fox no, no way what does that mean no i'm just <laughs> you're just fishing <laughs> you're there you're just fishing you don't even know what that is no it was it was it was a subtle subtle dig. Dig. it was bad i, I shouldn't have said anything I, I, like i'm lashing out because i'm sorry <laughs> he's never had a show on fox a little canceled oh, yeah yeah. So yeah all right now let's get back to the phones but let me say this you feel this way sort of about politicians like this sort of Dan Quayles and even the George Bushes and uh, many others in office. You get the feeling, you know, when they were 19, they were that uh, stupid fraternity guy who was, uh, you know, making everyone go by the pledge book and all that kind of stuff. Absolutely. Didn't seem to be very creative, didn't seem to be very smart, but yet seemed to sort of power forward despite their own eh, inadequacies emotionally and intellectually. All right. Amanda? Adam yep. feels much better now. Thank you. Oh, you know what I wanted to oh, mention wait, before Drew coming off is the Calb also invented uh, barbed wire. Yeah, that's their big claim to right. fame. Which again, they have the museum there. I had barbed to point wire. it out to them <laughs> that that was no big, big kicks either. Uh, wire and barbs both existed. You guys just you know put them together. Barbs. <laughs> yeah, but the barb industry was really, <laughs> it was struggling. It was really it was struggling. struggling until they finally put it with wire. Oh, there's barbs all over the place Yeah, here. but the people that got in yeah. on the ground floor of the barb industry are laughing pretty good now, Andy. <laughs> pretty Where good. Where do you think Barbie came from? Yeah. Oh. Now, Mr. Smart. Guy. Amanda? Uh-huh. You're 22? Yeah. What's up? Um, okay. So I have a little bit of a problem. I kind of have gotten in trouble sleeping around with different people. Um, I had a boyfriend for about three years. A while ago, Um, more recently, I dated a guy for a couple of months, and we're still friends. We still talk. Um, We kind of broke it off while he's going, he's getting divorced. Uh Um, Mm -hmm. And his problem is that he thinks that because that was my past, 
that if we were to get back together, he thinks I'll keep, you know. Let me, let me, hang a second. Let me, get, let me get this straight. He was somebody you were cheating with? No, well, he was already getting, he was in the process of getting a divorce when I met him. No, I understand that he was cheating, but were you also cheating? No. Uh -uh. You, never, you never cheated on him. Not on him. Well, or you never okay. used him to cheat on someone else. Well, yeah, when we met, like he asked me all kinds of questions about my past and yeah. had a really big interest in everyone that I had, you know, been with. He wanted to know, yeah. which is understandable. I mean, I think it no, it's not. Both no. ways. It is, but it isn't. We we, we no. generally believe that you should, people shouldn't freak each other out with that. On the other hand, for your from your standpoint, you should understand unless you do some significant work on yourself, history does predict future. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Well, and then the thing is, this is what happened. Like, he knew that, like, when I was t when first talking to him, before we were officially dating, I, I was seeing some, kind of seeing someone else at the same time, and it yeah, That's what him. I'm saying. That That's what I'm saying. He, he expects that you will do to him what you have done to other boyfriends. Yeah, and what he did to you. <laughs> and, what he well, did, and, and you should expect the same thing, because he cheated on somebody, too. Sort of. Eh, yeah, going well, the thing a with his wife, like, he never loved her. No, all right, so, they all say that. They all say that when they get Yeah, I don't know. I mean, and that's what he tells me now, but and he, it was really his suggestion. He told me, well, you need to call Dr. Drew and figure out what the heck's wrong with you. Okay, well, well on. hold on, hold on. How many times have you done this? Well, okay, so I dated a guy for three years, and he was the first person I slept with. Since then, I've slept with seven other people. All right. And that was so I, I know, but... I'm asking you how many times you cheated on one of them. Yeah. I, I haven't. Like, I cheated on my boyfriend of three years once. All right. And, I, and then... This guy's making it. you feel yeah, bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hold on. Hang on a second. Let's, let's clarify even further. Is, is that cheating episode, was that at the end of that relationship? Um, was that well, already done? It was more complicated than that. Like, I knew he was going to be leaving. He had to do, like, this church religious mission thing. Oh. And so I knew a long time before he was going to be leaving, and I think that was hard for me to handle. Yeah. I don't so know it, for sure, but right, it right, was right, towards right, the end right. of the three years. All right, all right. So here's here's what's going on. Yeah. The guy is an older guy. Yeah. He's she's 22. He's doing a little mind control thing on her. I don't like this guy that much. I like the idea that he said to talk to uh, Dr. Drew. <laughs> you like that, huh? <laughs> for some, that, for that's some the reason. Thing, that's what you like about him best. That's yeah. the only thing he's got going for him. But... Even that's kind of manipulative because he, yeah. know, he knows you that you'd respond positively to that. Maybe I'm playing into his hand. Exactly. Amanda, how old is this guy? He's actually he's going to be 23. Uh, so he's a young guy and his, his marriage didn't, didn't last very long. Well, yeah. And like I said, like he, he married the woman he married. It was because of like. All right. I don't no, care. we don't care. Look, yeah. here, here, here's what it is. This guy's 23. When you're 23, you ask all those horrible questions yeah. and you become some sort of some sort of Sherlock bizarre Holmes. stenographer yeah. of, of it's this person's past and they want to know everything and then as soon as you collect all that information you then start using it against them and you end up confusing the person because it's like it's done in a way where I just don't want that to happen to me and it's all BS. He's it's got it's not even that. It's really it's just that male bravado. It's just the testosterone is making them angry that this is territory where other males have yeah. been. That's yes. you, period. That yes. You were, retro, you were yeah. cheating on him before you even knew him. <laughs> exactly. Right. That, is, that is the effective... Yeah. That's the affect state they're in. It's all right. BS. Right. So here's, here's what I think women, by the way, because this happens to almost every young woman when she hooks up with a 19 or 22-year-old guy or something. Here, here, here's the tack they should take, not only for them, but for the guys. Yep. Because you have to treat guys like you're treating a pet or a child. Yep. They need boundaries. They need to be contained. The, the pet needs to go in the crate. Otherwise, it's going to run all over the house. Crap everywhere. Crap yeah. everywhere. Right. Absolutely. Same with the kid, by the way. Do they have yeah. crates for them? Oh, yeah. Okay. Here's Because otherwise, you can't transport them, can you? No. you got to be in a box. Okay. They're called boxes so, for kids. So here's, here's the thing. I go and punch holes in the top of the They, they come with jar. the holes. They come with oh, okay. So here's the thing. You need to say to them, uh, look, I, you, know, I'm, you know, I'm not a virgin. Uh, neither are you. Uh, I love you, you love me, let's move forward. I have no I diseases you, you, and I have no problems. Right, even clearer than this, look, I, I haven't done anything unusual for somebody my age. Right. I've had other relationships. You can count on me to be monogamous in this one. That's my intention. Nobody's perfect. Let's get on with it. Yeah, but right. first, you need to tell yourself you haven't done anything wrong. Because if, if I think he's... Happens. he's Some people he, have. Yeah, Hold but no, but I mean, what? But, yeah, but down. you know what? Life is... First. You know, people do a lot of stuff, and and uh, you know, you probably. I, I'm assuming you never killed anybody, or that you, you know mm. that you were never cruel to anybody, right? But you know, stuff happens, and if this guy is making you feel bad, 
And his, and first of all, I don't like the fact that he's snooping around. We're more worried about him. Yeah, we're more worried about him than we you know, are about her. Yeah, yeah. Although we're completely capitulating to the fact that he referred her to us. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I but I do think too that like he if he's making you feel bad about what does not sound to me like from the the little bit of information does not sound like an Unusual. like you have anything to right. feel bad about whatsoever. We agree. Uh, th- that you sh- you. Next time this happens, say, get out. <laughs> Andy just sort of coasts into a sound. <laughs> I don't know. I realize it's hard to show. <laughs> it's out. late. It's Sunday night. Come on. Father's Day. Let's go. New York Minute. Let me jump okay, in. Everybody go see it. Let me get a little time. Okay. It's 722-22 after 7 o'clock. Andy Richter in studio tonight. Coast into a stop. New York Minute coming out. Coast to a stop. Not a bad name for a uh, sitcom. Coast yeah. into a stop. Yeah. yeah. It's time for that really sounds like something. <laughs> yeah. You want to see something that. Called, you want to check something that Something called out. inertia. Check it out. Man, I hope that helped out. But it's not. It's he, Your right. boyfriend is right. You are freaking out a little bit. But we are also concerned we, about him. Too much talk He's about He's being her. a jerk. It's Loveline. We're here with Andy Richter, and we'll be right back after this. There you go, Loveline. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. He's Andy Richter. Mm -hmm. We're back. All right. Let me just check in with Anthony before we go to break. Anthony? Hey, how you guys doing? How's the weather in Arcadia, Anthony? You're 24 degrees? Drew, Adam. Yeah, 25. Hi. Yeah, my question is for Drew. Um, I've become a compulsive eater over the years, uh, after my teenage years, after um, high school. What, what I pretty much do is um, I'll like, um, watch what I'm e- eating during the day, but then mm-hmm. I, at night I'll go out on a binge. I'll go to a fast food joint and, you know, just mm-hmm. okay. eat burgers and fries. And All right, uh, hold on a second. Hold on, hold on. we got to take a break. we got to go. Drew's going to go rape the candy machine, ironically, uh, during the break. Let me just say this. I just uh, struck me, you know, everyone's always talking about uh, fast food and uh, what it's doing to the kids and everyone's getting obese and everything. I know I am. I'm always talking about it. The, uh, the thing they don't talk about and I never really thought about is fast food, the drive through is open till midnight or 2 o'clock everywhere now, which is really adding a whole new wrinkle to this stuff yes. because, uh, you know, back in the day, the place would close at 8 o'clock or 9 o'clock. Maybe the late night one stayed open at 10. But there's no more of that uh, sitting around feeling the urges at 1.30 in the morning and hitting, the, dri- hitting the drive through yeah. you, you know, right. it's like knowing it's out there, knowing you're, you know, four, three, four bucks away from something that's open till right. 2 a.m. And it's uh, around the corner. That's 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 an extra. Well, and it's it's, and it's good. Put a severe dent in the Seven Eleven bean burrito business. And as we've been hearing since yeah. our childhood, Adam, sixty million children go to bed hungry in our country yeah, every that's right. night. That's right. And this hunger is a huge problem. We've been hearing nothing but that and secondhand smoke since we were twelve. Right. Yeah. Which is it? Yeah. Well, they're hungry and morbidly obese at the same and time. And smoking. And smoking. Actually, there's a smoker blowing secondhand smoke at that. Uh, we're gonna important. take a quick break. Uh, Andy Richter uh, here tonight. We'll uh, maybe talk to. Uh, <laughs> no, he's got a second win. He was coasting a little there. He's I back. Did, I he's just a dear friend. Realized I didn't have anything more to say. No, that's all right. It was good. It was good. I just realized I don't care about anyone's <laughs> problems but my own. <laughs> I know it's a I know it's a problem with a show like this, but you had me come back. No, we did. Or we come did. In a- the Andy clear, first place. Andy clearly didn't want to come tonight. I was surprised <laughs> to see him here. Quite honestly, I really was. When I came through the door at uh, nine, I do what and I half, say, except when I forget. That's right. All right, dear and dear and friend, I do like Andy, you haven't brought there? it up. No, and you know what? We got to go to break. I'd like to at least uh, attempt to hang out with you a little bit. Just not now, not for a few years. Right. But just <laughs> because I, I, um, you're on my short list of cool people to oh, hang out you. with. You know, oh, like I was you. saying, yeah, me and Rick there, we're, uh, we, we bowl a little bit. We should play some cards. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or something. It's cool. We you're, went to Splash, got a tub. Got you're a tub, very, you know. you're very high. You have uh, re- regarded very highly. Oh, thank you. Cool for, guy. For the yeah. hangout. Factor. Yeah, for the hangout factor. All right, we'll take a uh, quick break. And can you uh, introduce me to Odenkirk, too, by the way? Because he's on my <laughs> Do you list. you want to meet him? He's on my list. Oh, cool guy. I see that with Rick there. And, uh, I can maybe Rick see and Odenkirk, me and him, we're just, we're just kicking around some ideas. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, I didn't realize I'd be dropping. We'll take a uh, quick break. We'll be right back. Hey, everybody. 
love line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. And now, our favorite gal pal, the one who has a... Uh, spontaneous orgasms when she sits on cold surfaces. Yeah. I yeah. think you may be stepping on her orgasm, Drew. So to speak. Yeah. Because it's coming. Yeah. So to speak. Mm. Nicole Richie, everyone. Hey, everybody. It's Loveline. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Nicole Richie's here tonight. The Simple Life 2. Road trip. All right. The uh, Simple Life. Now, so here's here's what goes on. This year, uh, they take it on the road, which is actually a good idea because uh, last time you had to stay in that uh, sort of farmhouse. And there are all sorts of hijinks, but on the road, it's it's endless. Yes? Well, the first season, um, Paris and I are both busybodies, and oh. we just, we get very antsy. And the fact that not only do we have to stay in Arkansas the whole time, but we had to stay with that family, and we had all these rules and these curfews mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. I mean, there were points where... During the day, they just wouldn't let us go, like, to the mall just because. Because they just wanted us to, like, sit there well, or whatever. Well, because they're paying you. <laughs> well, just, you know, I mean, <laughs> they're, the they're just like... The family or the producers? The, no, the family but, was like, you guys just parents. need to... Yeah, you guys they're just like, need to hey, spend girls, family time. Oh, really? You cool out here. Yeah. Wow. Just sit yeah. out and spend yeah. time with the family. Yeah, yeah they really did. And that, uh, that I mean, I was 21, it. Paris is 22, and... Yeah, not, that one can that happen. ship has sailed a long time ago. So, I mean, they you know, should have got in on you guys when you were 11 and 12 exactly. years old. <laughs> now, forget about it. How do you undo that? I well, mean, I mean, it's just it's it's a it's an interesting question, which is is if you're a child and the child is used to a certain lifestyle, some call it a privilege, some call it a little uh, uh, a little reckless at times, maybe a little irresponsible. Well, whatever it is, the kid is the captain of his own ship. The kid does not, doesn't say, uh, what do you want me to do tonight, Dad, or when's my curfew? The kid does. Once that kid does that, it's really hard to reel him back in. Well, if they're 14 and 15 and still growing, then that's fine. But, I mean, we're adults, and I haven't just... You're right. Had that You're kind of authority since I was 11 years old. So right. that that was a little bit of a problem. We that it wasn't planned She's or anything. Confirming your point. So yeah, yeah so. exactly. Yeah, someone yeah, the uh, farmer John needed to get to you when you were wearing uh, jammies with the flaps on. And I yes. think I think you right. probably could change somebody if you hung on to them until their libido started falling at about 42. Uh, yeah, no, no. What what happens is is people then change later. They find Jesus way Christ later. or they OD or they have a couple divorces yeah. or whatever way whatever it, it is. It, it yeah, way like two later. decades. Yeah. Yeah. So if you don't, so here's the moral of the story, parents. You got to catch catch your kid between like zero and maybe twelve. You don't catch them between zero and twelve. Then you got from twelve to maybe forty two. <laughs> And then somewhere around 42, they start slowing down a little. It's a tough 30 years sometimes uh, in, in between. It's a tough, it's a big window. Could be. Tough, tough parenting. All right. So, uh, leaving Miami, uh, heading, to, um, heading to Beverly Hills. Yes. With a, uh, what's in that? a Winnebago. Not a Winnebago. Uh, and Airstream. Oh, Airstream. Oh, yeah. Old school. Yeah. That's right. That's right. And how many stops? Is, is each episode a stop or each stop an episode or there's multi stops I don't know how they do the actual episodes right. I think that dog crap somewhere What? I think so. Mm-hmm. She farts a lot so she could have just okay, farted. Okay. Okay. Nicole, or it could have been me. Nicole brought her uh I may have queefed actually. <laughs> Nicole brought her dog in. Uh Drew smells number 2. Unacceptable. Now I'm freaking out. Come on, buddy. It. Really? Chris yeah. you over there? I'm not smelling either. Chris, what do you got? What'd you do to him, Chris? Nothing. Chris. You scared the S out of him. Leave the poor dog alone. What's the dog's name? Honey Child. Honey Child. Don't mind the big scary man who only gets $10 an hour and lives at home. <laughs> like the way I seamlessly weave that into almost well every done. conversation. You didn't even, even see in, it. Even in uh, Ch- Choctaw, you got that. Yeah, that. hey. All Thanks, right. Bro. All right. So, uh, all right. Drew, leave the, stop obsessing with yeah, the dog. Yeah, So, Okay. Nicole uh, and, and Paris leave leave Miami. Uh, Twelve episodes? How many episodes? I think it is 12. It's either 10 or 12. And, and the, the climactic episode is uh, you landing in Beverly Hills. Yes. Yeah. Is it, and, and how long did it take to shoot the thing? Six weeks. Is it, is it a long six weeks or is it a fun six weeks? It was fun. It definitely was long. There's no, because we're in an Airstream, there's no... Right. Unpacking and stuff like that, and and it was just really cramped because it was Paris, me, our two dogs, and also, obviously, the audience doesn't see this, but there's a camera guy, there's a sound guy, and it's we're in like the smallest 
smallest space. Let me uh, let me just give this uh, observation on the lap dogs. Uh, you guys are getting an early jump on those lap dogs because historically it was only like Zsa 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 Gabor, and Ava yeah. Gabor. <laughs> you know, 65 plus. Yeah, here's how lap dogs are supposed to work. After I mean, a good 65 years of living, you decide this dog is the most important thing in your life. It's usually after multiple divorces. And then eventually <laughs> you get in a fist fight because they won't let you bring it on the airplane. But by then you're, you're into the, your late 60s. Uh, Although it's been a new, remember we had Deborah Harry bring her. Were you here when she tried to bring her dog up? No, oh, only, they didn't let her bring her dog. It was in the old building. I guess you weren't here. They didn't the, want to let the uh, dog in. Yeah, there was a fist fight. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Well, th this is what happens. What happens is, is you you get attached to the lap dog. The lap dog just becomes it's like your belly button or your <laughs> yep, nostril. It's exactly. Like, and but then, she flies with me. She can fly. <laughs> I, <laughs> what about the person next to you, though? Like, what if someone's allergic to dogs? And how come I can't get any goddamn peanuts on a Southwest flight because some pussy called in and said their kid would go in an anaphylactic check, shot by <laughs> open some peanuts? You're going to fly with your dog? I think the rule is if they're under 10 pounds. Yeah, what, what whatever. About? If you're allergic, then you sit in another seat. We agree with you, by the way. Yeah. Well, Send no, oh, hold on. Let me have a side part with you. Not about the dog. I, I understand. Idiot. But the, I don't, the, the I point tell is them take, to keep their goddamn dog at home. I understand, but take responsibility for your allergies, is what you're saying. I agree I'm, with that. I'm, yeah. I'm fine. I'm take fine an allergy that. pill. I'm fine with that. Sit in another seat. Yeah, okay. So, But you can't fly with a dog. You, you have to fly first class. You can't fly business class with a dog. Um, I don't know about that, but I, I feel like tried. you can't. never flown business class. I've flown business <laughs> class, but I can't. I've, I haven't I, flown business class with the dog. I, I know maybe I'm dwelling on this too much, and then there, maybe there's certain things in life that confuse me, but the idea that, you know, I, you can't bring your toenail clippers on board <laughs> and you can't be trusted <laughs> with an actual fork. You get a spork, Ooh. but you're bringing your dog this with you. This could be a terrorist uh, See, yeah, that's what the dog could be packed full of TNT. Who knows? The no, 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 no. You bring, you bring a medical, you bring a medical slip right. with you, saying this dog is certified to fly. Wow. Carry it in a in a purse. You right. have to. The, the, carry the dog in a purse. You have to the carry the dog in a purse, or I mean, some people have a dog carrier, but most people that or fly. Something. Right. Something flexible though. Something. Yeah. Right. And um, for landing and takeoff, they have to be under your seat, and then <laughs> I just. She's, I mean, the no, thing about lap dogs dog. is yeah. they're if they're with dogs. their moms, they're just going to sleep. Like, so it's not like they're barking or running around or anything. It, it, it I mean, she's makes, all good. It makes perfect sense, except for the part where they tell you, like, if you lit up a cigarette in the head, you would be, it would stop the plane and arrest you. <laughs> you know what I mean? But, right, right. but Nicole's it, got her dog out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, uh, yeah. Huh? Yeah. No? It seems rangy. It, it really, it yeah. really is. It's like uh, not sure what you can and can't do on the plane yeah. anymore. Yeah. Yeah. All right. The t it's weird. And the whole thing with like airports and planes in general is just like if you got to ask, the answer is no. Right. It's just no. You right. just can't do it. That's you can't why it do seems anything. Funny That's why the dog. dog thing seems funny because they don't let you do anything. <laughs> but uh, let me uh, let me uh, let me tell you this. Uh, oh, no, I didn't want to get into, but, you know, we, we just got back from Europe uh, a week ago, and it was, a, you know, huge hassle. So you didn't want to oh, do yeah. anything, change anything, or move anything, or oh, yeah. whatever. I mean, everything's a disaster. All right. All right. Dog on the pool. What if the dog starts farting? You said the dog's gassy. She does fart a lot. Well, what if? He, but, he but, I mean, there's go. people that fart all the time on, on planes. Uh, people, people have way... Oh, you know, it's a decent point. It's a decent point. But people... Well, well, here's the thing, though. You have to encounter people on the plane. You don't necessarily have to encounter the dog. And people would excuse themselves, perhaps. Drew, if you had gas, yeah, you, and you're you sitting a, at the, at, you, you, you would go into the loose. bathroom yeah. and do that cheek spreader move that yeah. you do, right? That, that you excuse do, yeah. yourself. If I farted on a plane, I wouldn't turn to the person next to me and be like, "Excuse me, I farted." I would, I would lie or get no, up that, or go to the bathroom. No, that's or what I mean. Like you would, you would excuse yourself to the bathroom. I don't mean you would make up an excuse after you blew wind on the guy next to you. I mean, <laughs> you would excuse yourself to the bathroom. That's what I meant. All right, let's, uh, honey child, honey child, uh, Shannon. Yeah. Shannon, we spoke to you last night. Remember her dad had just Ooh. died? Yeah. Ooh, yeah. I'm sorry. 20. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah, thanks guys for talking to me again. It's really nice. How sure. are you doing today? Um, I don't know. I'm numb. It's yeah. easier to, like, be in denial today. <laughs> How did he die, if you don't mind my asking? Um, he died of cancer. He was given six months to live, like, four months ago, so... Yeah. 
<coughs> we actually spoke to her back then. She was dealing with it. How close were you guys? We were really, really close. Where's your mom? Um, my mom's around. My parents were divorced, but they were really close as well. And he, um, I moved back home with my mom, and he actually moved in with me and my mom. Do you have any siblings? Um, yes, a uh, brother and a sister, both older. Are they helping you at all? Um, yeah, my sister, yeah, my brother's kind of just handling it in a really, like, different way, or he just, like, jokes a lot, and I don't know. And, but all right, so, Drew, what what do you do? Well, the, the problem, Shannon, is you, you still aren't even really opening to the idea that he's gone. No. Really? That, that's what she said last night. She well, that's why I'm saying really, because it's horrible radio to do that. I see. See what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, no one was listening last night at 12 and then I again see. tonight. That'd be two days in a row. You know, we have not every other day policy. It's not horrible to explain exactly what that little exchange was about. Yeah, you yeah. want to listen. Here's the deal. You can listen uh, Sunday, Tuesday, and Thursday, or you can go the uh, Monday, Wednesday I see. route. I see. It's, it's, yeah. Yeah, that's how we break it's it like, up. like a, like a show. Otherwise, series. we got too many people listening. Yeah. <laughs> um, what so the hell's the dog doing with its tongue? What is that? Panting. I said, yeah, but it, it flattened out like a diving board and stuck right out. It, that, it, he did that on purpose. That was an attack. <laughs> you see him giving a stink eye, Drew? He's got a stinky eye. All right, go ahead, Drew. Um, so, Shannon, the, really the first order of business is really uh, letting yourself come to terms with this. And the only way that's going to happen is with the support of other people. Are, are, do you have enough support? I'm sorry, I can't hear you. What did you just say? Do you have other people to support you? I do, but... I've just been kind of pushing him away. And How about the hospital? Any of the... Well, I mean, there? he was in a hospice program, and I don't know, they called today, but I didn't talk to him, and they well, just kind of wanted to... There are grief... There are, the there are yeah. usually bereavement groups through hospice yeah. you can get involved with, and you'll, you will find uh, you're resisting it because you don't want to come to terms with it, and that's natural enough. All, all of the avoidance and resistance is all the fact that you want to stay in this place where you can sort of magically believe he's going to mm. return or that he hasn't really gone. Yeah. That's not a healthy place to be. That is a place that will become very depressing rather quickly right. and potentially pathological. So mm -hmm. get, to go to a bereavement group, get friends around you, just slowly kind of let it in bit by bit as, as, you, right. as you can tolerate. Let me ask you this. Yeah. How much of... Um, it, it, you know, we have this sort of theory that you recover from uh, m emotional trauma, sort of like you re recover from uh, physical trauma, which is, you know, guys do that thing where they go, oh, man, if he wasn't in such great physical shape, he never would have survived that motorcycle accident. You know, it was just that he was in phenomenal shape. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? So you're in good shape going into the accident. It helps you recover there is after the trauma. There's definitely something to that with mental Ill Ill issues, too, emotional issues. Right, yeah. I mean anybody's go anybody is going to have a, a grief in a in a period of mourning uh, after the uh, loss of a loved one. Yep. But if you're depressed already, uh, well, you may go into a serious tailspin. Right, or if right? you have some conflicted issues about dad or some unfinished business. Yeah, it can really become very acute. All right, let's uh, talk to uh, Mark over here, who's uh, sixteen. Hello. What's <laughs> yeah, bogus? <laughs> bogus. <laughs> I am. Besides a bogus call already. How? Uh, wow. I don't know. <laughs> it was just well, the I way you said hello. It was funny. The way you said hello. <laughs> Sorry, I was on speakerphone. Liar! Uh, liar! Whore! Liar! Whore! You know it! <laughs> <laughs> All right, what's your question, Mark? Um, well, I heard you talking about Sphegna, like that thing on your uncircumcised penis a long while ago. Sure. Yeah. And I just, I just, like, I have it, and I just yeah. don't know how can I get rid of it. You've got some yeah. debris. You, you uh, compressed keep, air. Yeah, you got what do you think? Scrub things out and keep it dry. Are you European? Uh, yeah. How'd you know? Because most most people that are uncircumcised are you, you're European. I I hope so because I don't understand the American that's 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 uncircumcised. Yeah. Yeah. So so you're European. So uh, you, so so you can't get circumcised. Oh, uh, he's not European. Yeah, you're not I, European. I, I, I heard you on the phone. like, hello. Yeah, Mark's from Van Nuys. Why what? are you why aren't why what? aren't you circumcised? Huh? Why aren't you yeah, circumcised? Well, I was born in Hungary, and then I moved to America. Where in Hungary? Uh-oh. Budapest? No, you weren't. And they listen, uh, a screw off like Mark would not know the name of Budapest unless he didn't know huh? in there. It's a, it's a pretty <laughs> decent <laughs> point. not really located in Hungary either. It does either. seem squirrely, though. I... In Budapest. All right, speak some Hungarian to me. Yo. Mm -hmm. I yeah. I have to say, wait. What do you want to say? Uh, Shok szeretettel. 
right. What? That means I like you a lot or something. All right. Yeah. And um, I have one more question. What do you eat? What do you, what do you, eat? Huh? you, you, uh, you eat Hungarian food? No, I hate it. it. Tastes like crap, actually. What? I, I like Hungarian food. You don't like paprika? It's uh, what? It's pa- paprika. paprika. They don't say paprika it's, there. You don't say paprika, do you? No, they say paprika. That's right. It's yeah. pop. Oh, she is. Right. The only yeah. thing I like about Hungary is there are lots of hot chicks there. But all right, Mark, we I now believe you. Just farted on Nicole. Huh? Good. Teach her a lesson. <laughs> Mark. Yeah. Okay, uh, keep things clean and uh, keep them dry. And get yeah. circumcised. Girls don't like uncircumcised. Really? Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. All, um, right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> or go back to your uh, beloved Hungary and uh, get yourself a nice hot Hungarian chick. Sure. But All right. All right. Listen, I, I know he's Hungarian now. I believe him because you're right. Him actually naming a country and then naming a capital of a country is way out of the range of one of our callers who didn't actually live there. Mm-hmm. It, it, you know, and I think about this all the time. Like, uh, somebody could say, uh, where are you from? And you could easily name a country, and you could easily name a city in that country, or you could make up a name that we never heard of, because uh, obviously we don't know every city that's in Hungary. We right. probably know two, you that's know. Right. So, uh, yet, way too tall in order for anyone who calls this show. Or, or God forbid to plan a name in a country. That's right. Yeah, that's I think he's telling the truth. Oh, he is. Because he's is. uncircumcised. No? He is. And, and he speaks Hungarian. <laughs> and he wouldn't, have speak, he, wouldn't have, he wouldn't have chosen Hungary. No. All right. So here's the, the, here's the thing. Uh, 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 dry. That's the part. That's the other thing. Yeah, it, it's, you it's know, people, of, people don't realize that stuff needs to kind of dry out. Oh, yeah. Ew. Yeast loves wet. Yeah, fungus. but everything. I mean, you get jock itch. That's fungus. You got whatever it is. You got to get air down there. Those things are fungi. The yeah. Feet, fungus. What about like when you get a cut and yeah, you get a cut on your finger? Heal. Yeah, the drying helps it heal. Yeah, that, that's what I, I tell people. I mean, you got to clean it out mm-hmm. and you got to protect it. But like when you go to bed at night, shouldn't you take the band aid off and let's get, get some air on I, it? I have a problem with nurses with wound care where they always want to put ointment on everything that's yeah, open. It just keeps like, going. Yeah, just, yeah, keep it going for weeks. You gotta right. let it dry out. Absolutely. Yeah. All, right. all right. Let's. Uh, all right. So clean the dong and um, hang it on the line, or yeah. uh, throw it in the uh, dryer and uh, put on a tumble, <laughs> or handheld dryer will do it. What handheld dryer? Uh oh. It's sixteen. You're gonna start beating off if you put do the that. Dryer. Yeah. He'll electrocute himself yeah. first. Oh, he'll burn himself. <laughs> Just no, I just mean it's going to remind you. Oh, I see. You know what I mean? As a six-year-old dude, how long could you be alone with your junk before you went like, hey, wait a minute, I got an idea. That's why as a guy, you can't, you can't, as a guy, can you take a bath before the age of 30 without beating off? You can't do it. You know, you know why? Because you, you go like, I'm just going to take a bath. I think I'll take a bath. It'd be nice to take a bath. And then you just lie down in the bath. You go, this relax. You're like, oh, there's my dick. <laughs> huh. Uh. Yeah, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna light a candle. And go, well, look at it, it's kind of buoyant. All right, said I'm beating off. <laughs> wait a minute, don't wait until I'm done with the water. Ah, screw it. <laughs> I'm just beating off. I mean, uh, right? How much time can you spend alone with your penis before it's time to beat off? Three point eight. You, you gotta have some jeans on. Shower's fine. You're doing, you know, shit. You're busy. You're busy. Right. You know what I mean? Your hands are moving. Yes. It's an interesting indictment on your psychology that you have to be busy or you begin masturbating immediately. <laughs> what, especially that's, if you're alone with your penis. Well, that's why I keep the pen in my left hand. Yeah. Because uh, the second I busy. put it down, the hand just, just slide right under the console. All right. Yeah, uh, who are we talking to? Bridget? Yeah. Bridget. Hi. You're 23? Yes. What's up? Um, I haven't had my period in almost 10 months now. Mm-hmm. And... I've been having some symptoms of menopause, I, like night sweats and like uh, hot flashes and no sex drive whatsoever. Mm-hmm. And I'm just wondering if it's possible for me to go through menopause at my age? No. It's possible to have ovarian function problems, but it's not menopause. Well, you're 23. You, right. there's some, you could have pituitary tumors, you could have thyroid conditions, all kinds of stuff that can go wrong, but it's not menopause. See, why haven't you gone to see the doctor? It's been 10 months. Um, I had a bad experience my first time to the doctor. For mm, hold, hold on a, a second. This has got to be an uh, abuse uh, yeah. survivor. Something. Something. Whenever you hear that bad excuse. Yeah. 
I mean, uh, bad experience excuse thing. It's always weird. And then the holding off for months and months, which yeah. has a medical problem. Yeah. Gosh, Bridget well, sounds brittle. Bridget. Yeah. You sound way older than 23. Do I? <clears throat> yeah, which really usually means you, you saw too much too early. Right. Were you forced to grow up early? Uh, yeah. <laughs> what happened? Bad family? Yeah, they're kind of... Oh, sorry. Ooh, the S word. <laughs> um, right. Yeah, sorry. All right, Anderson sorry, will clean that up. But um, is your alcoholism? Yeah, my mom's an alcoholic and... Um, you had to take care of her? That's, well... And I've been raising my younger siblings since I was eight. Yeah, yeah so understand, see, though. See, that's old. I know. See, yeah. you're eight, you're raising somebody yeah, instead you're of... parentalized. Instead parentalized. of screwing yourself. Yeah, parentalized. Yeah. Screwing around. Yeah, yeah that's that's so. what I... But uh, any abuse other than that? Um. Well, I was uh, I was raped when I was 14. Yeah. And... That usually means there's some sexual abuse before that, though. Right. What happened before yeah. that? Yeah. Um, <laughs> my step grandfather did. Ooh. All right. So what every every interaction you have with a male is going to feel like somebody trying to rape you. And look, the doctor is just trying <laughs> to do their job. You need to get in there and get this taken oh, care. Oh, I know. Of. Yeah, get it get taken care of. You, if you're if you're having ovarian failure, you can end up with bone disease, all kinds of things, fertility problems. If this is a pituitary really? tumor, it can get out of hand. Uh, there's a lot of things that can go on here. Let's go ahead and get this taken care of. All right. Okay. All right. And uh, how about a boatload of therapy for all the horrible abuse you've gone through? Yeah, yeah, I'm doing that. They are? I'm doing that. Yeah, okay. it's, it's right. good, though. I've had a, uh, my relationship, I've got a great relationship, and um, it's it was six years on the 1st of June. So it was, was what? Yeah. what? I've been with the man oh, that I'm with. Two year, years. What, how many years? Two years? Six. Six? Years. Six years. Since you were 17. Yep, on the 1st uh, of June. How old is he? <laughs> He's 47. 47. Oh. oh <laughs> I know. I know. Yeah, that's all right. You're an, you're an old spirit. That's that's exactly the way I feel. That was, Wait a those are, oh, hold on. Let's do some uh, very uncomfortable uh, math. Uh, it was 40, she was 17. 23 40? years. I, Four? Yeah. Well, I'll be 24 in July. So it was, I met him right before I turned 18. And uh, he was 40 or 39. So. Yeah. 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 God yeah. Damn. Well, he's oh, 47. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a guy, uh, that's a guy I don't want to hang out no. with. No. No, he's a Although really. I don't even like being around myself. Yeah. Um, yeah, he's a great guy. He's a great guy. Yeah, he is a great guy. Yeah, sure. Yeah, he's no great, great guy except for the no, uh, you, pedophilia. You know, no, he's great. So it's fantastic. Don't have children with him. He doesn't want to have him. children. Thank God. Yeah, he doesn't right. want to have children and doesn't want to get married, so he thinks that he's holding me back. Mm. Oh, good. Well, it's good. good. Pulse. Break up with him. <laughs> no. Yeah, he's a bad guy. Yeah, I'm in love with well, then him. Ag then again, Bridget shouldn't have kids. All right, here. good. Yeah. yeah, don't have kids. Just yeah. look, stay with him and, and stay with him. It's all right. Yeah. All right. I actually, no I actually believe Bridget's doing some work. I do. Day. Do your work, baby doll. And, I will. Uh, I hope you. your uh, step-grandfather's dead and died in a horrible Yeah, he way. is. Actually, he Great. died about eight years ago, and I was pretty happy. But I don't know. I've, I've talked about it a lot in therapy, and I've I've let it go. Good. Good. As much Good. as I can. Go take yourself, take care right. of yourself medically. This, it's called oligomenorrhea or amenorrhea. It needs to be evaluated. It's not menopause. All right. So listen, everybody. You see, uh, you see what your voice will give give away. It's all in the voice. Yeah. And how how you make us feel. Yes. It, yes. Immediately. Yeah. Here's because uh, because the interesting. I I read. I I've actually read Super Old Boyfriend, and uh, in therapy, <laughs> and uh, I read. Uh, sort of uh, no childhood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, some abuse. Yeah. Marco, it, it, please. The screen, no, the screen says uh, 23, no sex drive, night sweats, hot flashes, menopause. That's in question mark. Doesn't, there's no abuse. There's no anything in there. And, and people always want to, they're always like, uh, why do you guys, get, why do you say, why do you make everyone abused? Yeah, or, we, don't make uh, we don't make her abused. Her, <laughs> her step-grandfather made her abused. And her alcoholic mom made her abused. We're and just trying just, to get to she it. She just made us feel it. She made us feel it. And when she made that crack about not wanting, you know, having the, a bad experience at the doctor, then I knew. And sounding like a Vietnam nurse from uh, yeah, she's six 20 tours of duty. Yeah, she's for Christ's sake. All right, same uh, age as Nicole Ritchie. No. 24? I'm 22. Oh, uh, uh, all right. How dare you? Close how enough. dare you? All, all right. right. Go to break. All right, Nicole uh, Ritchie here tonight. We'll take a quick break from uh, The Simple Life, and we'll be right back. Hey, 
everybody. It's the Love Line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Orlando Jones. Hey, now. Here tonight. All right. All right. Uh, when we left off, it's been Nicole. Nicole's, uh, I'm just going to pop in to see when that uh, smoke alarm chirps again. We're obsessing on her smoke alarm and neglecting her very important question. But quickly on the smoke alarm one more time. I was saying to uh, Orlando during during the break, I said, could you imagine if you're designing... No, don't leave ah, put on, her on hold. We lose, we lose the timer then. Uh, I got it. Right. Imagine if you're the company, you're uh, First Alert or Coleman or the company that is actually manufacturing or you're part of the board that decides the criteria for manufacturing and things. So it's like, well, here's the deal. It's got a, you know three years battery life. Uh, it has to have such and such a decibel siren and such and such other criteria. And what if the battery's going low? Well, it's got to be a uh, 110 decibel <laughs> chirp that goes off in no more than 40 second intervals. And people must have been going, oh, that'll send people running to the liquor store to get batteries. That's I mean, the point. That's could, the idea. Yeah, there this would be impossible to ignore. Yeah, in fact, in fact we could get into liability from uh, causing people emotional distress. And uh, Yeah, yeah. It's essentially like someone pulling a diesel truck horn every 30 <laughs> seconds right. in your bedroom. I mean, there's no... No, they. But here's the thing. It's like when the, it's like when they're breeding roach spray, and they said this stuff will kill a rhino. Right. But then a few generations later, roaches started thriving <laughs> on this stuff. We've outbred humans for this. Do you understand? Yes, yes. We're now we're it, now we've bred a human that is not bothered by the 120 decibel chirp that it, goes off every 30 seconds. It proves uh. my theory that like if it happens long enough, Americans can get used to anything. Uh, right? remember, remember when the homeless was like a problem? Uh. Yeah. All of a sudden, that's no longer a problem. No. We, we didn't even worry about that. There's a homeless guy who's outside my office, and every day I talk to him like he lives somewhere. I'm like, hey, how you doing? Hey, how you doing? But <laughs> the problem is, for 10 years, we were arguing that homeless people were just Regular people that ran out of money. Oh, it was always, yeah, yeah. It was always, that? This, always the same ramp. Oh, exactly. This, this guy was a work for a defense contractor. He yeah. was an engine. He was a right. he was a met, metallurgist. No, and no, it was no, like, no. That guy no, does no, not no. Exist. That's not what I'm saying. That's no, what I'm saying. No, no, we no. were doing the rap where this guy he has a family. Right. He had a great job. He was working for Northrop until oh, yeah, they yeah, closed yeah, their you. factory, and then all of a sudden he smells of Boone's Farm and yeah. he uh, <laughs> defecates in his pants. He lives, lives yeah, yeah. No, no. Yeah, these are guys. These are drug addicts and, and people with very they, serious serious brain mental injuries. disorders. Mental yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. These aren't guys who got laid off over at Grum and Northrop. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Those people find a way back to work and, and by back the, to a by place the way, what, why why must we do that as a society? And I know that's mostly the left wing that does that kind of crap where this guy's a hard working family man after 30 strong years of working for the fat for you know GM he gets laid off pow he's in the street and by the way you work for you get a, you got a gig for 30 years <laughs> and cool. uh, you get fired on a Monday and a Wednesday you're living out of your car yeah, that's called picking projecting. out of a dumpster uh, no, that ain't you're not doing a good job of financial it's, it's management the, it's again the BS of the press that they don't ask the right questions that's and they, be they believe whatever's on the surface and then they project that in, in, in the, under the yes. satellites yeah. and that's the story. The people yeah. who are on the street are drug addicts or they have mental disorders or both. Yes. And I don't know what percentage of them are factory guys that have been laid off or good God-fearing family men. I'm going way less than 1%. Yeah, I don't mean? know what factory there is in Beverly Hills, but I know it's a lot of homeless dudes hanging out. Yeah. Well, the weather's got good climate out here. Yeah, exactly. I'm not mad. Uh, all right. So, Nicole, yeah. Got to figure out this uh, question. So, Nicole, uh, you got high. Yeah. What do you mean got high? I mean, smoke, smoke pot? We were smoking chronic. Oh, yeah. chronic. All right. Not confused with the bionic. All right. And uh, you gave a oral to your uh, girl roommate? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, well, because, like, she was telling me that she misses this guy who did it so good and whatnot. Uh -huh. Yeah. And she was like, uh -huh. um, you should leave because I'm going to, you know, um, please myself. And I was like, I was going to say something. And she was like, what are you going to say? I was like, let me know if you need help. And she's like, all right, go yell at the kids and then come back and then maybe... Yell at the kids? Him. What? Wait, wait, wait. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Go what? Um, she has two kids. They're like my god kids. Oh, okay. Oh, rock on. By the way, my <laughs> girlfriend's out of town. I'm getting ready to go please myself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they better hope Just nothing happens. That out there. They better they, hope nothing they, happens they to her. Anything. They don't know yeah. anything. Right? Reiterate that, Adam. I said they better hope nothing happens there. And by the way, a whole new generation of people immune to the smoke detector chirp. These kids are living in the house? We're in an apartment. They're living in the apartment with you? Yeah. 
By the way, oh. the, the kids were... Well, hold on a second. Oh, my God. We are breeding... That's what I'm talking about. We're oh, yeah, breeding yeah. generations of... You know, no, no, you know it's going to happen when... Uh, here's the thing. Companies now... Who uh, manufacture smoke detectors? Low them. battery, yeah. a big scissor arm with a boxing glove, <laughs> down and whack you on the head. Because <laughs> the, the chirp, the, you think these kids are going to mind the chirp? No. These kids aren't going to be able to go to bed without the chirp. You understand? Like when these yeah, guys yeah. are in their thirties, they're going to have a smoke detector with a low battery on yeah. their nightstand. Yeah, no, they're, they're, they're going to they're have smoke detector machines instead of the wave machines, the, <laughs> yeah, rain, yeah. the relaxation <laughs> sound, yeah, smoke detector <laughs> machines, the sounds of the oh, ocean, the rainforest, and, and a smoke detector. We got to take a break. All right, right. again, Nicole. Yeah. <laughs> we're never getting that. I know, Nicole. Hold on a second. Okay. Hold All on. Right. This is, by the way, al uh, albino white trash activity but, but that's going on here. This is scary stuff. Scary, scary. Two kids, huh? Yeah. Okay, uh, hold. They're young. Oh, okay. Well, they're, oh, they're, that's they're, much, they're better, fine. much better, much better, Nicole. Okay, they'll be okay. fine. All right, hold on All a right. second. Oh. And by the way, smoke detectors there to detect smoke, so your kids don't burn in a. Yes, thank yeah. you. Okay, uh, Orlando Jones here tonight. He's uh, both uh, amused and disgusted. We will uh, take a, a quick break. We'll get right back with Nicole <laughs> for the, another hour or so, and then it's going to go into Rodney's show. <laughs> She's going to talk to her. All right, right after this. <laughs> Love line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Yeah, hey. Or, as he's known around the hospital, Dr. Half Jew. Orlando Jones, dear, dear, dear friend, mm -hmm. is uh, no, actually, um, dear friend, angry black man, but smart. Yeah. And funny mm. and thought provoking. Yeah. 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 Mm hmm. Anyway. Not that angry, by the way. No. He kind of reminds me of, uh, if Dave and Alan Greer were black, I think they would have the same, <laughs> oh they would share some of the same sensibilities. Okay. Yes, Drew? Yes, after David kicks your ass, I agree. That's right. Orlando Jones, everyone. Hey, everybody, it's Loveline. <clears throat> Is that me or the mic? I'm Adam Carolla, that's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Orlando Jones in studio tonight. I'll let you, boy. Orlando can be found on uh, Father of the Pride, Tuesday nights, NBC, 9 o'clock. And uh, now it's time to play a little something we call Germany or Florida. Jackie? Hey. You're 14? Yes. What's up? Wait, wait, wait. Explain oh, to Orlando oh, how I this forgot. Works. I forgot. I'm sorry. Um, <clears throat> Walking away. The uh, Yes, Germany or Florida. All bizarre stories. All the uh, macabre, all the occult, all the uh, people Weird cutting their toes story. off, frying it up and eating it. Violence. Comes from either Germany or Florida. Gotcha. So we hear the story and then we guess. Is it Germany or Florida? Gotcha. Okay. All right. Go ahead, Jackie. Okay. An actress was taken to the hospital after a man injured her breasts while trying to cut open her bra with a chainsaw during a rehearsal for a show. It was the worst moment of my life. I thought I was going to die. The woman, who is also a former porn star, told a newspaper. The chainsaw operator said she was lying down during the rehearsal and suddenly bent forward just as he was applying the saw to her bra. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. So this is like an act, like a, like a sideshow act. Mm -hmm. We're mm -hmm. going to take the... No, uh, it's, she's got to be huge. Otherwise, the chainsaw would actually cut her hit sternum. Hit the sternum, right. Yeah, so she's got to be like big surface gal. top. Sort of weird, right. weird, big gal. Macabre. Big gal. I, uh, she was a felt, felt Florida. To me. I felt Florida for the She was the in porn, so I... That, <coughs> California. I go yeah. 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 Sure. What? I go Germany. You go in Germany? Drew, yeah. what are you saying? I, I can't figure it out. Does Germany have weird sideshow porn? Yeah, well, yeah. I can see I Germany having, having a weird... weird Florida doesn't have thing. weird shows like that, do they? I think they do, yeah. Do they? I think they well, do. I, I cannot decide. I, you know, I, I'm just not into fat porn, so <laughs> I have to hope that it was Germany. What do you think she's fat? So, well, she I, could she's be. big. You didn't cut her sternum. I figured no, she had maybe a big too. Silicone type, you know, oh, right. yeah, yeah, Minka yeah. style. Of All right, silicone. but don't try to talk Orlando out of his No, I'm just trying answer. to reason this through here. I'm going to... Florida. Orlando's I'll, going Germany. I'll go Florida. Uh, I'm going Germany. It's ironic okay. that Orlando would go Germany and <laughs> yeah. Adam would go Florida. We need some guy named, like, um, Helmet, who goes Florida here, just to sort of uh, equal out the irony. Yes. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> All right, so what do you got, Drew? Florida. <clears throat> Florida. Stop being such a puss and going with me uh, all the time. You're always right. What? Stop being okay. a puss. All right. All right. I'm just going with the odds. All right, Jackie. I, uh, Drew and I are Florida. Orlando is Germany. Go ahead. 
Adam and Drew, you guys are both wrong. It's Same. Germany. Oh, ha-ha. You have not been wrong Drew, in a long time. Way, you're wrong <laughs> twice by saying C when she just says Adam and Drew. I'll let Do you, you understand boy. how bad your instincts are? <laughs> C, you're wrong. Horrible. I tell you, smell Germany. Wow. I, hey, I work with six feet and Roy, man. I'm, Orlando I'm, Jones knows. It, make, it makes sense in retrospect. I mean, we're, yeah. What else? In this no. country, you couldn't get away with dangerous stuff like that. No, yes, you could. Chainsaw, getting close to somebody's uh, body with it. Look. The liabilities and blah, blah, blah. No, 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 no. You can do crazy circus acts. No, it was like a circus yeah, thing. Yeah. You could do that. I thought about that. But, you know, they do like knife throwing they, They've come and stuff a long like way that. from the clown's I'll crawl that little car. Yeah, what happened to the lady with the mustache? You know what I mean? <laughs> I mean you know. She's got the bra on and she's getting a chainsaw. Oh, she upgraded that. Okay. Yeah. yeah, well, hey, hats mm-hmm. off to her. Let's take another one. Let's do it again. One more yeah, time. Let's okay. do another let's one. Try to get right. one. I like it. Right. All right, Casey? Yes? 28. Go ahead. Hi, there. really quickly, I just want to say I'm a really big fan. The last time I called in, I was 18 and I'm 28 now. So that's how long I've been listening. Wow. <laughs> wow. wow. Casey. I know. Drew was it's like crazy. 55. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Emergency medical technicians summoned to the home of a grossly overweight woman. Mm-hmm. In a, um, had the usual problems rec- removing her, inadequate stretcher and doorways too small. But there was mm-hmm. a much more serious concern for the 480-pound woman. Mm-hmm. She had not budged from her couch in several years, and its mm-hmm. covering had become grafted onto her skin, requiring her to be transported while on the couch to the hospital. Mm-hmm. The couch had to later be surgically removed. Yeah, I've mm-hmm. seen cases like that. I've heard of at the hospital. Really? Where the, where the springs get embedded in the back and you find animals living in the people. No, man, I, I had that when I was effing a bean bag in high school, but it was you different. Get embedded in your I don't prostate. It. Well, it wasn't all just... It was messy. It, we, you, got, you made a cement... I had to be. We had to soak it off. I see. It I was very uncomfortable. So I, I don't know why my stepmother had to preside over the whole. Oh, thing. how embarrassing! Very huh. uncomfortable. Florida, <clears throat> EMT. Yeah, I don't think EMT goes Germany to me. You mean you don't? We don't, they don't call it. I don't think they call it. Yeah. Maybe they would translate it that way. Maybe they would. All right. No, I, I, I've Florida. heard of these things I'm going Florida on in the U.S. We're all going Florida. Yeah. Although 480, uh, I don't believe morbidly obese in Florida. I believe they would call that uh, fit. Yes? Oh, you're right. All right. We're going Florida, Casey. Unanimously Florida? <laughs> yes. Oh, wait, no, wait. Yes. Last answer? Yes. <laughs> Final answer? I get so nervous. <laughs> Would you like any lifelines, anyone? <laughs> no. Florida. Okay, so you're one for one now this evening. It is Florida. There we go. All there right. We go. Well, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm one for two, actually, and so is Drew. Yeah. No, one, one, yeah. one, one win, one loss. Yeah, one, I know, one, but, one. but you would call it one for call one, it one for two. two yes, yes, one for two. Yeah. One for one would be. You're one and you know. one, I should say. <laughs> That's right. I'm two there and There you go. That's right. Thanks. That's yeah. Cool. Orlando, don't ever forget that. Yeah, yeah. Make that clear. Uh, but, uh, all right. Let's talk. Eh? I want to talk to Nicole. Oh, a bigger part. Yes, please. Think, okay. Uh, Some hot lesbian action going up here. Ooh. Nicole? Yeah. You're 19? Uh, what? What's my, my son's baseball team played a Santa Margarita, Santa Margarita team today. <laughs> I'm not going to explain that, Drew. You're going to have to explain. Santa Margarita is where Nicole's calling from. There it's part go. of Orange County. Which there you is, go. Yeah, it's That's really enough. Southern. Behind the orange curtain. You just have to explain that one part yeah, of yeah. why you're bringing it up. Yeah. Okay. It's all right. Maybe in your 25th year of radio, you'll figure that out. 30th. Nicole? Yeah. You're uh, 19. You're calling from Santa Margarita. Yes. Um... Okay, what happened was... Oh, wait a minute, Nicole. I gotta, First of all, it's what oh, had hold, happened was... Hold on a second. Did you hear that? Oh, yeah. You heard that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. Let's give that to another uh, 20 seconds or so. Now, I, now I got it. I got it. I, I timed it at... Uh, was it 35 or 36? So that means it'll be coming in about Ten. a minute. Seven. Oh, here we go. <laughs> one, seven. No, no, we got a few seconds. We got six seconds. Three, two, one... Go. Or is this? Yeah, maybe it's a, maybe it's a thirty-five second thing. There, there, there it go. is. There All right, go. so that was thirteen. Yeah. All yeah. right, hold on. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta pace this now. One went off at uh, thirty-six. The other <laughs> one off at uh, one thirteen. So that's forty-seven. Yeah. Is that 47? I got to do the math. Yeah, that's 47. Okay, that's 47. Okay, so 47 on to uh, 113. 
then is uh, but, wait, but you stop the clock two. You oh, stop the oh, clock. oh 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 well wait a minute no on. this one will work oh i'm looking at the wrong one yeah, yeah. oh man oh man we're all over the place now but nicole yeah we're gonna have to I'd reset say got that. Say, there it is okay there okay, it is 22 it was 22 okay 22 so it'll be 22 Seven, all right 17 next time right no, I, no. I have 36 went off at uh no no this is a longer one this is a longer one this one's 47 seconds that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying this thing. So this will be 109. <laughs> this thing should be 109. Yeah. All right, we're just looking at the clock here and trying to pace. That's her smoke alarm, by yeah, the way. That's her, and oh, that's her. I heard it. That's her low battery. Now get closer to it, would you, Nicole? <laughs> Everybody thinks it's a bird. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, like, those are your stone back? friends. Yeah, what kind of people you have visiting? Oh, yeah. there it was again. They, that came early that time. Yeah, well, no, they don't change. Uh oh. No, no, there's not two of them. Oh, you don't yeah. have two of them going on. No. What, she was at 22. No, we're 38. We're 38. They're always between 33 and like 40, right? Okay. All right. Let's just wait till the next one. This one <laughs> would write it too. This one's got to go at 238. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> All right. Let's see if we can count this down. You there, Nicole? Yeah. Are you, are you right underneath your smoke detector? Yeah, it's right there. Shh, All right. But don't talk. Five, okay. four, four. Three, two. two. One. It just okay. went off. Second off. Yeah, yeah we, we heard. We know it just went off. All right, now here's where the comedy. <laughs> here's, stop here's where the comedy. Oh, no, hold on a second, Nicole. Now here's where the comedy comes. <laughs> I'm telling you, Orlando, people live in these houses. The smoke detector is not in the entry hall. It's probably in her bedroom. Or the four foyer. It is in the master bedroom or, or in sleeping. their bedroom right. oftentimes. And... Uh, the average amount of time the thing has been going off is several months. Three to six months. Yeah. Now, yeah. this thing is over your bed. <laughs> <laughs> chirping. It's chirping so audibly that I don't really even need uh, these headphones to hear it. I think if she opened her window, it, yeah. she's in Orange County <laughs> with a nice offshore breeze, we could hear it. And it is going on month number five this way. Yeah. And I've said to Drew many times... This would drive a reptile insane. Yes. I mean, do you understand? <laughs> if you had a pet snake, it would go nuts. Yes. It would eventually just stand up and start, it, call her the C word, <laughs> and then yell, I'm going insane, you oh. see. How about getting a goddamn effing Four volts. nine battery, Four you volts. see. Right. Yeah. Don't make me slink to the 7-Eleven and get it myself, you <laughs> see. I, do you, you realize yeah. that? <laughs> I claim more animal than person if you yes. can sleep in that y room. Yes, yes. On the other hand, what I, the case I've made for, for you, Adam, the, the skill that you don't have is that, that unique ability to screen one's environment. That, mm. that's, that takes a, an amazing amount of skill. But, but it's an interesting thing that it resides on both ends of the human spectrum. Mm -hmm. The yogis who are uh, who've found such uh, light enlightenment fire. that they could actually yeah. light themselves on fire <laughs> that's, and see that's, no pain. She's getting closer to and that. And then the borderline junior college tards that call this show. Yes. Both at the spectrum of the not noticing <laughs> yeah. anything. Ah, yes. Not feeling no You know no what that pain. is? That's the amygdala. The amygdala can be it's no, pre wired. Nicole amygdala. could walk on that's flaming sand. She could like walk that. on yeah. flaming sand. The amygdala right? screens things out of your nervous system and it screens out for novelty in the environment. So if you don't hear anything, if you're not able to appreciate novelty, well, you don't hear that beep every few minutes because there's no difference in the beep and the non-beep. So wow. there you go. Wow. Wow, Nicole. Nicole, yeah. I'm impressed. How long has that thing been chirping? Well, um, I mean, like when I first moved in here, it was, it does that, but <laughs> and I just, I don't even notice it anymore because my dad did that too. Oh, by the way. Hold on. Oh. oh. <laughs> wow. 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 <laughs> So her dad's did. Did you well, hear Pandora's she was, box? No, no. She was that? born into yeah. a house with a chirping smoke detector. Yeah. She moved into this house with a smoking smo yeah. chirping yeah. smoke it's, detector. It's, it's Therefore, uh, in 19 years. No, we call years. those legacies. Yeah. <laughs> she's, oh my God. she's a prodigy. Oh, my God. She's a tardigy. If you meet another guy who has a smoking, uh, a beeping smoke detector, marry you, him right did there. Did you get oh. all that information? That's the one. Well, first Let's off, find out when she moved Hold on. This is the... This is the, the the coup de grace yes, because yes. This, is not, this hasn't been going on for six weeks. No. This was happening when she moved yes, in. Yes, yes. And has not been corrected. And by the way, this is another thing I've learned from uh, oh now gosh. living with a woman. There's something about women which is if they can't reach it 
it ain't getting done. I mean, they stick their hand up, and as high as they can get their hand, that's where it is. There's no concept of getting. Here's why they don't do the smoke detector, because they can't reach the ceiling. Yeah. Women do not have the ladder concept at all. Guys, nothing but ladders. Half the guys over 50 die from falling off a ladder. That's true. That's no true. woman ever You're dies right. from falling You're off a ladder. Right. What happened? Whenever you talked about one of your dad's friends, well, what happened? He's in the house. He seems so. Uh, he's cleaning the gutters. Fell off the ladder. Yeah, Broke his head. Right. No. Yeah, went right, landed on a piece of vegetable. Oh, I've heard. I, I got a friend. Guy landed and then like rolled into the pool. That's, they found him. <laughs> I mean, guys die on ladders yes, every day. You're absolutely no right. woman has ever died on a ladder. Ever. Ever. Yeah, you're right. What, what, they have women firemen. What do they do? Do they just sit in the truck? At, at 50, they, they stop. They can't, get, they can't get above the ladder. No chick will ever go up and get anything off the ceiling. Nicole? Yeah. And by the way, they could, they could see a, a, a spider <laughs> uh, size of a tarantula just crawling around the ceiling. They just sit there and watch it. They can't do anything. <laughs> it's a guy's job. Got to go up there and get it. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. Nicole. Nicole, how long have you been living in that house or that apartment? Um, for about three, three or four weeks. About a month. Three three or four weeks and the thing was chirping when you moved in yeah i asked my roommate to get it fixed but she just she she that's that's she. a lot yeah to get it fixed right you understand yeah. it doesn't need to be it's, fixed it's not broken it's working it's, fine it's it's, it's, it's replaced it, the battery the fact that you can hear it is is, it me, is. means it's working it's letting it's you telling know. you the battery's low i don't even want it though because like i smoke in my room there's no point in, it doesn't go off when i smoke yeah right Battery's low, it's, but it's made it's made not to go off for stuff like cigarette smoke. Yeah. You understand? Otherwise, it'd just oh. be going off all the time. <laughs> and by the way, Nicole, do you want it going off when you're every smoke? time we ask a question, we get an explanation. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. How about you get a nine volt battery and replace it? That's crazy. Then you gotta get a ladder. No, no, no. <laughs> Leave it like it is. Let all it be. Right. I can just we, we the whole about. entertainment center. <laughs> What's that? Ladder. What? You? Oh, you can step on the entertainment center. Yeah, don't need a ladder. That's right. true. Just balance off the TV. All right. Mm -hmm. What am I supposed to do with that information? I don't know. I don't think I'm making that. Nicole, we got to take a, uh, a little break. All right. I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to break the second the thing chirps again, all right? And then we're actually going to return for your question. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Because it's a, it's a hot lesbian question. <laughs> yeah. All right. So. Is it your roommate? <laughs> don't answer that. Don't answer that. Hold that thought. We're going we're gonna to break. You ready, Chris? When you hear the chirp, Orlando Jones in tonight. I want to hear a very, a very uh, lively outro. Hold on, Nicole, relax. There, there it is. There it goes. <laughs> All right. We're out. This has been Loveline. Loveline. The opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, the sponsors, or the station. Sponsors or the station. The producer for Loveline is Annie Gold. Loveline is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.